In this video, let's talk about enums. Now, enums are named constants which we create. So basically, if you uh, try to have some constant example, you know, when you talk about error codes or if you have worked on a networking concept. So let's say when you send a request to the server, the server will give you some status, right? If it is accepted the request, if it is rejected the request or the resource not found, the 404 error. So basically, you know, we have these numbers for every type of uh, data you get from the server. And also we can have a name for it. Now, when you know that we have a specific error codes or when you have a specific constants which you want to use, instead of creating a different object by yourself, you can create a enum. Now, how it looks like, let me just give you a simple example. So let's say we have enum here and I'm saying I want to go with enum of status. So I will say status. Now in this status, I can have different constants, which I want to use. Now, of course, you can create a class and you can create multiple objects of it. Uh, so let's say this status can be of running state, of fail state, success, pending. So you can have all those things. And of course, you can create a simple class called status and you can create multiple objects, right? But just to keep it simple, uh, we can use enum where we can define all the names constant. And this, are, this is pre-built, okay? Uh, example, let's say if you talk about status, I can have status like running status. I can have status and of course you can diff you can separate them with the help of comma. Uh, you can say running, then we can have failed, uh, then we can have pending and let's say success. Of course, you can change the sequence, doesn't matter, but you can have this constant. Now the advantage for this is if you want to use an application where you want to return a status to the client, uh, that status can be running, the status can be failed, pending or success. Instead of writing, returning a string format or a specific object, you can simply return this status. Now, how easy it can be? It's, it's very easy. You can just go back to your main method and you can say, I want to have a status. So you can create a status reference, which is S, let's say. And this is same as what you uh, use normal variables. Example, if you want to say int i, and then you assign the value as well, right? Let's say five. So we have this int as a type, then we have this i as a variable, and then we have a value which is five. In the same way, you can have a type as status. That's right, this is a type of it. So all these are objects. Now this is something different in uh, Java. Now if you're coming from C++, in C++ we directly create uh, the status and we have all these constants. And it treats enum in a different way. But Java says, oh, -ho, everything is class here. So basically the status is a class here. I know that sounds weird, but yeah, that's how it is implemented. This is a class and all these are actually objects of status. So by default, you got, you got four objects and you can use any of the object here. Example, I want to use, let's say, uh, status dot running. Now that is my object, which is be assigned to S. Now, of course, you can print this S here and it will print the running status. So I can say compile and run. You can say it says running. So basically you can use any status here. Now, what are this? Just to reiterate, these are actually named constants. So instead of using numbers or string, we can use named constants. It will make your work a bit easy. Again, I'm not saying you have to use this everywhere, but if you have a scenario where you want to use constants, uh, we can we can use this concept and you can use any constant here. We are using running. I can also use failed, even that works. Compile and run, you can see we got a failed status. But yes, if you try to use a status, let's say no idea status. Now if you can see this status don't have any no idea and that's why you can see we got an error here. It says no idea cannot be resolved or is invalid field. That's right, so you can only use those status which you mentioned here. Now, in other languages, we have one more thing, you know, all this actually has a number. Uh, so basically you get numbering for it, maybe one, two, three, four, uh, so that you can pick the status based on numbers. In Java, it starts with zero. So this is zero, one, two, three. And if you want to get that, you can actually do it. So, you know, you, once you get a status, you can use a method called ordinal so be, so different constants here have different numbers this is based on the numbers right the order of it so this is first second third fourth right but when you have zero one two three so when i try to get the ordinal of running of course it will print zero and that's what you want to see so you can see we got zero but yes if you change it to success which is three in this case you can see we got three in fact you know you can also print all what if you don't want to print one you want to print all here uh, so what you can do is instead of getting one status, you can get all the status first of all. 
Because if you say status doc success, it will only give you one status. But what if you want to get all? So in that case, instead of saying this, you can say status dot. So there's a method here, if you can see, we got values and that's right. Why we got methods is because the status is a class and you get some inbuilt methods. Now from where we're getting these methods, we'll talk about it in some time or maybe, maybe in the next video, but uh, you got methods. So you can see status dot values will give you what? Okay, so let me just jump to values just to see uh, what it will give you. So status dot value will give you an array. You can see it gives you an array. So on this side, we have to say this is not a normal variable. This, this is a array. And for that, maybe I can say SS just to have a different name. And once you got this array, you can print all. How? You can just come back here. You can print all. Let's try. I'm not sure if you can get all here. No compile time issue. Run or it is printing the address or something. Ignore that. Okay, so what you can do is you can specify the index value. I can say zero. It will print running. Yeah, it works. But then what if you want to print all? And we have seen it, right? We can use a for loop here. Now, which one? I will use enhanced for loop. So I will just cut this part. I will use enhanced for loop here. And every time you iterate, of course, it will give you status, right? So what is this array? This array is of type status. So it will give you one status at a time. So you can say status s colon ss. And here you can print the status. So basically it will print all the status for you. So you can see it is printing all the status. Now with this S, you can also print the order of it just to see how it works. So you can say S dot ordinal. It will print, yeah. So it will also print the order of it. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah, so this is the basics of enum. We'll do something more about this in the upcoming videos.